just got off a surfboard or in the Himalayas. Joel Cladis now joining us live, and I love to see him put in the off-season work, the time and the commitment. Oh, man. Well, for, I, heard, I heard the shot as I was sitting in traffic. Well, you see it Do as a Do five shot. or six games a year? Tops, oh, maybe man. seven. Parachute maybe. in. <laughs> You're in an SUV, nachos, heading oh. home, five minutes after. Gus Johnson doesn't even wear shoes, and you parachute in. It's quite a life you've carved out for yourself. Big noon Saturday. Don't miss it. <laughs> and it's called Big Three Saturday because that's the time he's out of the stadium. <laughs> okay, l- let's start with a couple. Depends on what time the flight is, but uh, yes. Pressing issues. Four yeah, game yeah. suspension for Harbaugh. Yeah. I don't know what cheating is in college football. I can hand you cash. What did he do? What did Harbaugh do? I mean, do? he... he the original incident was basically a, a recruit shows up, they fed him, and like they weren't supposed to feed him. But then there was a cover up, and and I believe that Harbaugh over, quote misled the over NCAA a over apparently a a hamburger, and that's four games. I, I think it was more about what he said to the NCAA infractions committee, and they didn't feel like it was truthful. And so they're they're this suspension is more about him misleading them than it is about the actual impression. Can I, can I throw this at you? Sure. Please. Because I don't want to get too personal with Jim, but Jim and I share a little bit of a malady upstairs. We, <laughs> we tend to drift. And I say this lovingly to Jim. Okay. Because I've spotted it with him. I don't want to get into this. This is something you and I could talk about someday. But Jim, um, and I know coaches that have worked with him, can drift a little bit. It is very possible that Jim... His recall on a hamburger isn't great. He is a macro, holistic, big thinker. That is where Jim is wonderful. Sometimes the details may be a little fuzzy. Four games for that? Uh, I think that we're there's there's so many different ways you can go, right? Like the 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 way you went. I'm not gonna just wash this away, right? If if he wasn't truthful with the with the team, then then yeah, you should probably be suspended. There are guys that have basically lost their job for the equivalent of this. Thinking about Jim Tressel at Ohio State. Now, having said that, I think that we are are pointing towards a time, thankfully and hopefully soon, where the NCAA goes away. I'm just so tired of the 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 lack of consistency when it comes to punishment enforcement of rules whether those rules exist or not what are the framework of those rules who gets penalized who doesn't get penalized it just it just seems all so random yeah um and this you know they're going to deal with this four game suspension but listen their schedule is one of the easiest in America. Yes. And I don't think that this is going to impact them almost at all. No, uh, Georgia they, also has an incredibly easy schedule. They're better than Georgia this year. Well, that's well, that's a whole other topic. JJ you, McCarthy is going to go late first round. They're better because of that quarterback. Uh, it's hard hard to say that, Colin. Georgia mm-hmm. is the preeminent program in our sport right now. They have overtaken Alabama at that clip. You at think least they're going to win now. three straight titles? Well, I didn't say. I thought now you're just putting words in my mouth. I didn't say they were going to win game, three titles. Two show titles. suspension for you for that. Oh, well, that was misleading. And no you're, you're leading the witness. <laughs> Georgia is the preeminent program in our sport currently. Uh, they are obviously back-to-back national champions, and, and they are doing it with a blueprint that doesn't require them to have a great player at quarterback. Now, Bennett played really well at He's- times, got himself to uh, New York as a Heisman Trophy finalist, but at no point do I feel like, oh, boy, that's a quarterback-centric program. No, but they're ben a Stetson, roster-centric program. Yeah, but Stetson Bennett made a lot of big throws. That's fine, and he did make those big throws to guys like Brock Bowers, who are still there. And and Bowers is is one of, if not the best player in, in college football, along with Marvin Harrison Probably Jr. Probably the best tight end prospect in 10 years. Long time, you yeah. know, I, although Kyle Pitts was was pretty darn good as, yeah. as well. So all, all of that being said, Georgia's not going anywhere. So they had originally scheduled Oklahoma in their non-conference this year, and that game went away because Oklahoma is going to move into the SEC next year. Okay, right. so now their their schedule is is, I mean, I hate to say like trash. It's not trash. I mean, it's it's really yeah. soft. I'm not saying they're moving backwards. I'm just saying they're going to two. I it's so hard for me to tell you that I think Michigan can be the one that supplants Georgia because Michigan doesn't play with the blueprint that Georgia 
in in the event they have struggled or even been beat in the last two years, it's been a very similar style of team. It was Alabama who could really throw it with Jamison Williams and Bryce Young, and it was Ohio State this last year that could really throw it with C.J. Stroud and Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay, I don't. That's not Michigan. So Michigan's going to try to just line up and go toe to toe, roster against roster at the line of scrimmage. Nobody has been successful doing that against Georgia in the last two years. Nobody. So when I look at teams that at least have the blueprint to go out there and you, supplant Georgia, it would be an LSU. It would be a, a an Ohio State. I have LSU winning the whole thing. Well, I thought you just said Michigan was going to beat well, Georgia. I You're changed all over my the mind. place. You, I mean, you, I know I like you led pivot. with your like, yeah. all, you know, a little bit of loose. No, I think Michigan and LSU are going to be playing for the national championship. Wow, that's interesting. Um, yeah. I wouldn't go that that far. Right. I do like LSU a lot, though. I mean, these are teams that I like a lot. I, I think Michigan's going to start out at number two in the country. You are right to say that this might be Harbaugh's best Michigan team. Oh, it's deep. It's, it's his best quarterback at Michigan. There's no doubt about that. They're great at the offensive line. They're really good on defense. I like people who get picked on. I like Brian Kelly, and I like Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> I like because everybody's always banging on those guys, and I love it. Well, they bring it on themselves to a large extent. Harbaugh is different. We should celebrate that, not this cookie-cutter nonsense. I, I mean, are, am I arguing for cookie-cutter? Again, I, I feel like you're just trying to – you're putting thoughts. We haven't seen each other in a while, and I I'm know. sensing some animosity. There's no animosity with me. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was aggressive. That okay. was aggressive. Okay, let me throw another one at you. Before we get to this whole Washington, Oregon, like, like I'll get By to that By the way, I, I was, Michigan's my favorite in the Big Ten. Like, I love Michigan. Oh, I'm not I, trying to. So go ahead. Go no ahead. question they're okay. the favorite. Okay. I got LSU, Michigan, Natty, and then Georgia looking up at them. Still great. Bama or somebody's going to knock them off. Okay. So I like my quarterbacks. I don't like loose and casual. Yeah, no backwards hats, you know. You don't, you don't like you them people, winning Heismans. You I people get it. celebrate chutzpah and loose. I celebrate presidential. So Quinn Ewers has got a little Jay Cutler and a little Drew Locke. He's what better. Are you, what are you talking about? He's got he get a little loosey-goosey When has he been loose? Please name a, an instance First where he all, was loosey-goosey. He goosey. was eating ho-hos and uh, Hot Pockets. They finally got his diet right. So I like that. He's uh, he's eating like a grown up. Can he be a nine year a, a nineteen year old was eating ho hos and and coward's got a problem with it. Nope. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I think he's the most important player in college football. Here's, okay, that's interesting. Okay. Sark's gotta win because this is a stacked roster. It's a mm -hmm. transition year. Mm -hmm. We've already given Drake May and Caleb Williams anointed them, and I'd argue yours. Can it, Drake May, yours has more raw natural talent. No, that's inaccurate. Okay. But that's okay. Go ahead. Continue. And Texas, you've been telling me forever you're going to be it. I got to see it now. I think yours is the most, I'm not saying best. Most I important. Think, no, I, I think I'm saying Quinn Ewers, if he pops and Texas is back, it's huge for the sport. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, do, listen, do I don't buy disagree with that. I, I buy that argument. Yes, it would be huge for the sport. Um, Texas is the most underachieving roster in college football over the last five years. Most underachieving program for a decade. Yeah, of course, of course. And and yours, listen, I, I, I saw Quinn and chatted with him just a couple of weeks ago in Dallas. And, you know, I that's why I was, I'm, I'm making fun of you. Because, like, listen, he, he cut his mullet. He, he seemed much more grown up. Uh, it wasn't necessarily grown up. There was a sense of urgency about the way that he was talking about the season. It wasn't so much, I'm happy to be here and isn't this great, as much as it was like, I've got a, a mission to accomplish. I like that. That's that's the the sense that I got from our conversation. And and I was I was intrigued by that, to be quite honest with you, because this is this is a team, as you suggested, and I would back this up, they have a roster that should win the conference and compete for a playoff spot. Oh, I they went they literally stacked up against Bama last year. And my takeaway was Texas is better. Bryce Young just pulled out what he does. And, and they, they lose B. John Robinson. That's a, that's a big loss because no he was phenomenal, but they've got 10 starters back on offense. And it's a defense that quite honestly was better than most people think. Having said that, I, I will just say this and I maintain this. I've said it on my show and I'll, I'll say it here. Colin, unless I'm just done talking about Texas until they prove it. I like that because they have been this before. 
Yeah. The team that should be something and should win a conference and should compete yes, for a playoff spot, and then they don't. Yep. And they play down to their level of competition. They don't win on the road, and they do things that, that just make you pull your hair out. And Texas fans, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's wait and see about this team. I like that. And, and see how they compete in Tuscaloosa. That's how I view USC. I never talk about them. Right, right. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> All right, he's got a podcast, Joel uh, Clap uh, Podcast. You should listen to it. I'll get to that in a second. Washington, Oregon, stories today. Big Ten's considering. College football's always been have and have nots. They've both been in the playoff. They're both absolute haves. I could argue they're closer to Big Ten cities, Seattle and Eugene, than the L.A. schools are. Do you like them in the Big Ten? Well, it, it, it depends on what happens with the Pac-12. Apparently, the, there's, there's Pac-12. There's some, supposed to be some sort of meeting or, or vote about this Apple subscription deal that yeah. was presented to them. I don't see them biting on that. This has happened. Remember, 10 years ago or so, they got sold that their network would be better because they owned it 100%. And based on subscriptions, they were going to make a lot of money. That didn't happen. They're losing their biggest football fan base, their biggest basketball fan base, Deion Sanders and maybe others. They can't go into a subscription model again. I, I just don't see a scenario where this deal gets approved, which means there's going to be teams looking for a lifeboat out there and a lifeline. And I think Oregon and Washington will be on that uh, track. Um, and if they fit in the Big Ten in a couple of different ways. One is the brand of Oregon football fits in the Big Ten. The, the academics of Washington fit in the Big Ten, in particular when you take a look at what uh, USC and UCLA are now on the West Coast. It also alleviates, and this is an important part, as they've been working, the Big Ten and, and UCLA and USC have been working tirelessly over the last six, eight months on scheduling, not just football, but all the other sports. And they have run into some real headaches. Now, they're trying to work through those, and I believe they'll get there. This would alleviate yes. a lot of those headaches. And yes. actually, it makes more sense now than it did when USC and UCLA came in. So then you have to start talking about what does it look like from a revenue uh, standpoint. There's two models that you can follow through Big Ten history. You've got what just happened with the two L.A. schools, full share right away, or you've got Rutgers-Maryland model, which was half shares or a little bit more elevating over the you know the next yeah. successive years into full shares. It would probably be somewhere in between that. I don't think they would come in on full shares right away, but – this this is a, a fascinating point because the other side of this is the four corner schools. They could be headed to the Big 12 very soon. They could be looking for the lifeboats pending what happens in that Pac-12. Yeah, meeting. Arizona schools would go to the Big 12 in a heartbeat. They already recruit Texas. I, I, I don't understand why Arizona hasn't already gone to the Big 12, to be quite honest with you. Okay, uh, you said during the break, oh boy. That one school in the country, one program had the best off season. Who oh, was no it? doubt. And by the way, it might might not even be close. Colorado had the best off season in all of college football. All right, hands down. Hands they down. have nine players on scholarship. L would you listen? First of all, twelve. That's that is misinformation. I don't know it's if more they than can 12. field a team. I don't know how much more than twelve. I think Dion's but it's punting. more than twelve. Here's the deal. Let's just think of it from from a raw standpoint of what Colorado was in October of last year. They were the worst power five program in college football. They were one and 11. They lost by an average of 29 points, 29, by the way, Northwestern was also one and 11, also one of the worst records in power five. They lost by an average of 14. So Colorado doubling them up in terms of their ineptitude on the field. And since that point, what's happened? They hired Deion Sanders, become the center of the college football world. He gets a five-star recruit. He brings in the top transfer class in America. They sell out their spring game. Then they get ahead of all this conference realignment and are the first to move to the Big 12. They actually get stability and revenue share moving forward. Who had a better offseason than Colorado? You go from the worst Power 5 program in the country – and now all of a sudden they have momentum, they have a brand, and they are at the center, in particular early in the season, of the college football world. Big Noon Saturday going to be there for their opening two games. Gus and I, all the guys, I, I just don't see another team or program that, that raised their level as much well, as Colorado did over they, the course of the last eight months. They had some space to do that. Well, that's what I, would, well, that's what I just – Yeah. I literally just said that. Yeah, I know. But in fewer words, let me just say this. They were terrible. They'll be less than No, terrible. the words were articulate. Colorado, yes, was terrible. <laughs> yeah. But...
All right. Why are you? Why, why? I'm not. Hey, journalism is confrontational. Did I say they were winning 12 games? You kind of made it. Oh, they got a five-star recruit. You know what Georgia calls that? Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. I didn't say they were going to beat Georgia. Okay. I do think they'll be more competitive than people think. Okay. Now, you've got a, a podcast here. You've yeah. got quite an empire. Sometimes uh, I'd like you to stay focused on the big games. <laughs> but you've got a big podcast, and it's very good. You interview important people. You've had Saban on that thing. I don't know. That's how right. You... We just finished up our Big Noon Conversations, which is a series of the most important people in college football. We sat down with them. And then Monday, make sure to uh, uh, tune in on Monday, Joel Klatt Show, um, where you get your podcast as well as our brand new YouTube channel because we've got preview content starting. Now you've got a YouTube channel? Yeah, that's right. Big, t- big time. And we're dropping our top 25 on Monday. I tried to get a parking space here. I was turned down. You got your own <laughs> YouTube channel. That's interesting. <laughs> so on this YouTube channel, is it just podcast or I get a little inside of Joel Klatt's life? That's what I'd like to know about. Uh, no, no. It's just, it's just the show. Okay. Do, you, do you want some extra access? I, Maybe we I, could give some extra access. Yeah. You know, I met somebody the other night that knows you. His name was Sean. And his last, I'm not going to d- talk about him. He's very interesting. He works in London. He's a finance guy. A just thinks the world of you. And I well, said, slow Sean's down. A smart I, know guy. The, I know the Sean, real Sean, how clat. are you, man? I appreciate you watching and listening. I think the world okay. of you as well. Okay. Playoff, four teams. Give them to me right now. I like Georgia in the playoff. I like Michigan and Ohio State. Oh, boy. Go ahead. They USC. play at the end of the year, you know. You'll be doing the game. USC. One's going to lose. I like they that both one. went last year. What are you talking about? There's precedent. Yeah, but it's different. Um, USC is my fourth. I like that. I'm going to rue the day that I said that. No. No, you know what? A lot of times you're oh, very Look at you good. cheer up. Like, let's see his face right there. I hey. go USC in the playoff and <laughs> look at him. He's like. What? What? You're like a, a giddy stepfather. Okay. So, yeah, that's right. Giddy stepfather. So let me just say this. Is they got to stay healthy on their defensive front? That's true. They got some. They got some dudes. Caleb Williams is one of the best quarterbacks I've seen in college football in a long time. That's what I'm basing this off of. I think he. Might, I think he say might it, win a second it. Heisman. Well, he should. But we'll the, the media. I mean, listen. You You're in the media, literally. I am on the fringes of the media. L- I you am, literally are speaking into a microphone. You're in the media. That you could do that. I do that at my house. Doesn't make me the media. <laughs> In front of a mirror? <laughs> God, I'm so tired of this Honey, segment. you burnt the potatoes last night. It's the herd. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.